welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. This is Biff. And I'm Sean Carruthers. And he is Sean Carruthers. And this is the show that demystifies technology for you and makes it a little fun along the way. So, Mr. Carruthers, what are we, uh, we going to impart today? What uh, technology demystification are we going to do for our audience? Cat belly rub technology. That's a fabulous idea. Actually, no, I think most people know how to rub a cat belly, but they don't know how to... It's a very specific way you have to do it to, you know, get maximum cat happiness out of it. But that's a, a topic for a different show. <laughs> okay. Different podcast, even. Anyways. That's right. No, so. Today on the show, we're going we're gonna to teach you all about audio files. Now... Audio files? Audio files. We're going to teach about people that really enjoy audio? No, it's little files that have audio in them. Ah, oh, that kind of audio computer. file. I now, gotcha. Now, may seem like a bit of a, a novice approach to uh, a topic, and I know a lot of you out there are big technology users, but we kind of wanted to, you know, cover off some basics these days, and mm -hmm. we promise you, a little later on, we'll find some really useful, give you some really useful tips mm -hmm. for more advanced users, uh, but let's just start by demystifying what audio files are out there, which ones you would use, why you'd use them, and kind of demystify some of the buzzwords around that whole playing back audio on your computer and on your iPod and other devices like that. Great. Sounds like a plan. All right. Well, before we get into the meat of the show, let's break for a commercial when we come back. What exactly is an audio file? So, what exactly is an audio file? A relevant question, right? Because there's lots of audio file types out there. Yes. But, but let's start at the very beginning. So an audio file, a file, is a cluster of data. So of course you might see a doc, doc file, which is a Microsoft Word file. And you might see a, an XLS file, which is an Excel, Microsoft Excel file. Of course, if you're going to play back music, then it's going to come in a file as well. And it comes in a whole bunch of different formats. Uh, and probably the most common one, Sean, that we see all the time, that you probably have on your computer right now, is something called an MP3 file. MP3. And it's kind of the granddaddy of audio files out there. It's become sort of the de facto standard. So yes. let's start there, because I think most people will encounter that, and all their song libraries are probably on an MP3 file format. Mm -hmm. So what exactly is an MP3? Well, MP3 is, uh, is a file. It uh, uses a very specific codec. Now, in, back in an earlier episode, we talked about what codec is. Code decode It's basically uh, as you mentioned with Word files and all that, it's just basically a string of ones and zeros that goes from here to the end of the file, contains all the data. Codec tells the computer, how do I you know, decode those ones and zeros into something that resembles the eventual thing? So in this case, audio. MP3 is a particular type of format that takes uh, audio information and compresses it down into a very small package so that it sounds the same to the human ear but that it doesn't take as much space up in your high drive, which allows you to put it onto portable music players like your iPod or the original MP3 players like the Diamond Rio and things like that. Yeah. That was really important right way back yes. in the day because, of course, you know, your, the memory on these devices was tiny mm -hmm. and was very expensive. Of course, these days, now iPods are gigabytes in size. That sort of file compression is not that important, yeah. but we still use it. And uh, um, I think you're going to find that MP3, in terms of the world of compression, is one of the better technologies, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, it, and it's ubiquitous for a couple of reasons. One, MP3 files are easy to create. The uh, cost to actually create them is zero, and there is no what's called digital rights management or DRM technology on to protect uh, copying. So people love them, and they've become the de facto standard in terms of music files uh, on the internet for sharing and on your computer as well. So um, MP3 stands for motion, actually it's uh, motion. Two, motion Wait, Pictures yeah. Expert Group. That's right. Version dash two. one, or is it dash two? It's dash two. Level three. The three That's what it is. The three in MP3 is level three. Level three. But right. yeah, people think it's it's short for MPEG three, and it's not. It's a level three of a previous version of the MPEG standard. And MPEG, he said motion picture. I mean, you think it's an audio file. Yeah. Why is motion picture involved in that? Well, long, long story. Long story. But not really worth going into. No, that's right. But there you go. OK, so that's the de facto standard. If you get a file from a friend that has a piece of music on it, it chances are it's going to be an MP3 in most cases. Now, uh, we talked about DRM before, digital rights management. That, Ooh. I know, that's a, sort of almost like a dirty word it's out there. It's a swear in, word. It is a swear word, exactly. Uh, 
So DRM is a mechanism by which it stops you from sharing the file to multiple devices or limiting that or limiting number of plays. And it was really a technology built in by the owners of the, the copyright of the music uh, to you know, stop voracious copying. So you know, me giving you a copy of my Rush album, for example, all the songs on my Rush album, and then you doing it to 100 of your friends. You have friends. a Rush album, dude? <laughs> I do, yes. A Rush album. Don't you remember Rush? I don't know. Maybe you don't. Good Canadian content. <laughs> That's right. Anyways. But right, so it stops. But so MP3 does not limit you by in uh, copying the content. And of course, that makes the music authors and owners very, very upset. Some of them. Some of them. It's, there's a bit of a back and forth on that, whether or not it's good to be able to give your files away and share it. But I mean, th that's the conventional again, wisdom has been the conventional it's wisdom bad by the record companies. By the record anyway. companies, yeah. for sure. So what happens is, so they introduce a couple of other formats that actually do have digital rights, and you will encounter these in your travels in, when you actually buy commercial music for download. So one is called AAC, mm -hmm. and it's a standard used by Apple, uh, not actually invented by Apple, but, but adopted by Apple in the iTunes uh, shop, right? Yeah. Advanced. Audio Kodak. Kodak, right. So this, uh, if you're going to go and buy something from uh, Apple, then the file that's going to come down is going to be a .aac file. And yeah. we'll have uh, limited ability to copy and that sort of thing. Yeah, it also appears as a .m4a as well. M4a too, M4A, right. M4a, yeah. Okay. Now in the Windows world, there's a technology called WMA. It plays on the Windows Media Player. Uh, and again, also has Microsoft's version of DRM in it to a limit how that's copied and how that's managed and that sort of thing. So. You can encounter MP3, WMA in the, in the Windows world, uh, and absolutely uh, AAC, or you said M? M4A. M4A is essentially uh, an MPEG-4 audio version, and that has AAC uh, encoding inside encoding it. it. There you go. Okay, good. Yeah. So you take one of these files that we're talking about here, and you try playing it on, you, so you download it, and then give it to me, and I try playing it over here, and it won't work, right. basically, because of the digital rights management on there. Right, very good. Okay, good. So there are a couple other uh, audio files you'll, you'll come across. Uh, you know, one of them is going to be WAV, or WAV files. Now, they're uncompressed. There's from the Windows world, from an earlier version of Windows. It's a full, uncompressed audio. The files are enormous. But they're actually really good, because there's no compression on it. You get the full fidelity of the actual recording when it was made in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then there's another uh, less known technology called OG files, .ogg. And, do, do, and aug is aug, aug vorbis. Aug is the uh, the file format. Vorbis is the compression utility. Open open source, not used widely. You might find it more or less on Linux and things like that. Uh, but if you come across an aug file, you need a specific player to play your aug files as well. You won't see that uh, too frequently around these days, though. Yeah, there are a few MP3 players that'll play aug, and there a few years ago there were a couple from Samsung and uh, and Diamond had the one that played it. But yeah, it sort of came up and then went away again. Went away. Right. Okay. So that's uh, in the universe of audio files. You probably find a couple more. There's .au on the on the Linux side of things, uh, but those are the ones you're going to probably encounter in the world, mm -hmm. using your mobile uh, audio players and that sort of thing. Yeah. There's also uh, one that's been getting a lot of traction recently called FLAC, and the huh. FLAC, the LAC stands for Lossless Audio Codec. Now, when you're there, there's a few. Uh, bands out there that are selling their stuff through their websites and they're giving the option to download in MP3 or if you want the full version you can download the FLAC file. Uh, the thing you need to know about the FLAC file is you need to have a special player for that. It won't just play on any uh, player like you have like your Windows Media Player or your iTunes. You actually do need special plugins or you need a special player to do that. Very so good. But yeah, huge, huge files. They sound great but they're not particularly universal. You're going to fit three on your iPod. Pretty much, yeah. Right. Got it. Okay. Let's move on. Actually, it's a beautiful segue. Uh, I think we should uh, start talking about maybe some of the buzzwords that come along with uh, the world of uh, audio and music right now. You, sp you said the word lossless or lossy. Loss loss let's loss talk about, let's demystify some buzzwords around this. Okay. Well, we talked about uh, a lossy version right off the top, the MP3. And essentially what it is is uh, the WAV file you said is uncompressed. It's exactly the data that comes off of the CD. In fact, when you rip it, that's a WAV file. So. There's a lot of information in there that is there just for completeness that the ear doesn't hear. So the people at the Fraunhofer Labs, who are the ones that the got what? Fraunhofer. What was that? Fraunhofer. Fraunhofer. Right. Okay. So they had, uh, they're the ones that created the MP3 format. Yeah. 
and they said, okay, well, the ear out of this, it hears this, this, and this, so we can safely throw away all this other information and it won't make any difference to what you're actually hearing. Yeah. So compress it down that way, and that's lossy. It's right. losing information that was in the original source file. Right, okay, got it. And in fact, so MP3 would be a lossy technology, yeah. right? So what's happened here is when you listen to MP3, it's not like perfect CD mm -hmm. playback, it's near CD playback because they've removed the high end, the low end, and all the data that's not necessary. It's very close to being pristine, but mm -hmm. not quite. And in fact, the audio files, not the files, but the audio files with the p uh, uh, out there, uh, actually don't like MP3 as a, as a technology. It's not pristine, yeah. especially for classical music and things like that. Again, a lot of them don't like digital at all, but again, that's another, another that's topic thing. whatsoever. But, but let's jump into a couple of the things here because I want to talk about, the, you're going to hear in terms of uh, uh, buzzwords, things like um, bit rate, right? right. Bit rate being uh, a measurement of the number of times that a, an audio file is, is uh, sampled as you record it. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you're not recording all the sound. You're going every millisecond or microsecond. You're going, listen, 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 and you're taking digital data slices. Right? So bit mm -hmm. rate would be the number of times it's been. The higher the bit rate, the better quality of your audio file. Exactly. You're filling out that, that bit of uh, all those ones and zeros and squashing more information. Remember our DPI uh, episode recently? Same so sort of concept, right? basically. Right. And you'll hear the two other words you'll hear around audio is, uh, is analog versus digital. So of course, anything that's a, f a file that ha contains audio on your computer is going to be in, in binary, like ones and zeros, or digital. And then you'll hear something like analog audio. And analog audio, of course, is the audio that comes off of um, uh, in one of these technologies, like, well, like your old record player, for example. Right? It's, a, it's actually a wave-based data, data collection mechanism. Yeah. That, that or a cassette deck cassette. or out of your amplifier. Well, unless your amplifier uses uh, digital compression on it. Right, there you go. But anyways. So I, I want to uh, show a, a real quick takeaway here for people out there that want to learn a little bit more about managing uh, audio files. But is there anything else you want to add before we move on from a buzzword perspective? I'm all buzzed out. He's all buzzed out. Okay. All right. So I want to show you, I've gone and looked for a really great um, little audio utility called ULove. And it allows you to convert very quickly from different file formats I talked about before. Uh, it's real cheap. It's like 19.95. Need a 30-day trial. So I'm gonna I'm gonna fire this up right here on my computer. Um, just had, had hunted around, and it looked like a pretty good, straightforward utility to convert between MP3s and AAC and and WMA things like that. So very simply, gonna go into my uh, music folder here on the computer uh, with this program. I'm gonna go into an album called Ultra Chilled, and as you can see on the right-hand side here. There's a, a listing of all the files, uh, all the MP3 files that happen to be stored there. Now, if I want to convert, sim I simply select one of these uh, songs, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say, well, I could play it if I wanted to. Uh, I can uh, convert to AAC, I can convert to AUG, WAVE, or WMA, and if I select all of the files for a, a real quick conversion, I can actually uh, convert all of them as well. So let me just see if I can go Control A. Multiple select here, right click, convert all to WAVE, convert all to MP and, and WMA, things like that. So real simple uh, audio converter there. If you have a bunch of files and you want to convert them to something else, it's a cheap way to do it, 9095 uh, from ULove. And we'll put up uh, a link where you can go and uh, grab it. I think there's a free trial link too we'll put mm -hmm. up as well. Okay. So there you go. Do, did I, is that uh, my, that's my impression of Cheryl Poirier? I miss download. Very good. <laughs> Speaking of which, she's yeah. better looking. Yeah, I don't no. think the uh, the viewers like you as much as they like her. Sorry, Andy. Damn. I do All want right. to show you one quick conversion uh, tool here in iTunes as well. If you have yeah. a, a version of iTunes, typically when you rip a CD to your uh, copy of iTunes and then off to your MP3 player, it records in a certain format. The default on iTunes is AAC. Yeah. Uh, and you can convert to MP3 as well. So in general, when you have an AAC file on here and you need to go to AAC, you can uh, right click on the file and then go down to here where it says create MP3 version. So this is an AAC file right now. Uh, and we, we allow us to change it to MP3. And you can go up into your iTunes preferences if you want to change it the other way around. Go to the general and then import settings and then you can actually choose the format that uh, iTunes is going to save to. And this is a good tool or tool for you know, when you're creating it right off the bat. So you can choose MP3, higher quality. There's your bit rate, 192 kilobytes per second. You can change that to whatever you want. And you can change from MP3. You can go to WAVE. You can go to AIFF or uh, a lossless encoder here as well. Hmm, so good. you can, uh, and then once you've set that as your standard, any file that's already in your library, you can right click and say convert to that format. Very good. 
So they're getting a lot less stringent about the, uh, the digital rights management. In fact, they do have digital rights management free uh, uh, versions of their songs now in, in some cases. Oh, oh, don't get me wrong. If you've bought this tune from the iTunes store, you still can't convert it to an unprotected version. That's uh, not allowed. But if you have an unprotected AAC file, that allows oh, you to convert I see. it back so and forth. You're not converting the, 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 the protected file to unprotected. Right. That would be counterintuitive. No, that's a, a completely different segment, and it's not uh, technically legal in most jurisdictions. So. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, let's take a break, and when we come back, we've got uh, Miss Donalds back ag again uh, with a uh, another free file or or file from two cows uh, from the internet, and uh, then I guess we have pictures. We do have pictures. Very good. Well, we'll be back after this. <laughs> doing? I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing either. I'm counting you in. <laughs> oh, get oh, on oh. with it. Oh, All sorry. Right. All right, well, before we uh, get into picture time and the giveaway of my fabulous books, well, what's left of my fabulous books, um, we are going to go and see Miss Download. That's Cheryl Poirier, and she has a download of the moment from the internet that's going to be fun, and it's related to this episode, apparently. Hmm. Exciting, huh? All right, well, we'll be back after this, after she's done her thing. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. I'm Cheryl Poirier. And what you see on the screen here is not seismographic activity from Toronto. No, it is the audio layer from a Miss Download showing on open source download called Audacity. Now, it's a great download, and it does a lot of different things. So if you got, like, those Ray Parker Jr. Ghostbusters 45s lying around, or maybe you have it on cassette, I don't know, what it allows you to do is it allows you to transfer that file into an MP3 or a WAV file. Not only transfer it, but it allows you to take out all the little pops and hisses that you hear, you know, from LPs, because there's no reason for you to be listening to records anymore. Come on, 21st century. Uh, but not, it, I mean, it's a program that does a lot of different things as well. So you can import a lot of different audio, and you can generate, like, you can generate white noise, like, <sighs> you don't have to do that by yourself anymore, it actually generates it for you. And it has uh, a lot of different effects that can be done. One of the cool little effects that I found is one called reverse. <laughs> Which I like. So it, I mean, you can do a lot. You can base. I could base boost miss download, which would be silly. Uh, fade in, fade out. But let's see what it sounds like in reverse. There we go. Did I sound like that Muppet? That mushy, mushy. That was the shepherd. Mushy, mushy puppet. Yeah, that's kind of what it sounds like. Anyway, that is extremely entertaining for me. But it does a lot of other different things. Now, here's the thing about audio files. There are people who use like audio files all the time and manipulate all kinds of audio. They might find this particular program a little simplistic. On the other end of the scale, there are people who use audio files for their MP3 players or, or things like that. That's me. I found this program. I went, like I had to get into it and I had to do a lot of reading and I had to like sit with it for quite a bit of time before I really got to understand what it actually does. So there's like that sliding scale of audio people. So actually, you know what, why don't you get back to me at Cheryl at Butterscotch.com and let me know what kind of audio person you are and do you have any really simple audio files or any really difficult audio files that I won't even understand? There's got to be those out there somewhere. So Audacity. It's an open source, uh, so it's free, and it's actually a really cool program, but you're going to have to take the time to get to know it and make it your friend. You can do that while watching this download at butterscotch.com. Was that segment lossy or lossless that Cheryl just did? Uh, I don't know. It's probably, I don't know. I'm She's got lost. nice hair, though, whatever it is. Glossy hair. Glossy, glossy hair. There you go. Exactly. Okay. Mine is kind of glossless. Glossless hair, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into picture time. We and have picture we have a nice time. little segue here. You may, may have recalled a few episodes ago, we did a whole thing on identity theft. I remember that. Do you remember that? Yes, because I stole your identity. You wouldn't believe. I've got a new house. He does, actually. Uh, and um, what we said was, if you could show us your uh, version of how you protect your identity, 
and get rid of all the personal information that you have that you don't need anymore to stop bad people from stealing your identity. Like me. Then we would give you the victim of the shredder, which is absolute beginner's guide to security, spam, spyware, and viruses. And but as a consolation, <laughs> I like the looks of that. It really didn't survive the shredder very well. Uh, I was also going to, as a consolation, give you my new book, Windows Lockdown: Your XP and Vista Guide Against Hacks, Attacks, and Other Internet Mayhem. So we had a few entries, and it, they were really good. Um, oh, I will apologize. One thing, I think the cat peed on this version, so it's actually slightly damaged as well. But you know, it's kind of a collector's item at this you're point. You're selling it. You're selling this so much. That's Whoever true. picture is next up here is going to be so glad they just got this book. That's right. It's fantastic. All right. So let's do it. Who is the winner? And the winner of the cat peed upon book is <laughs> nobody. <laughs> <laughs> wow, nice save. Actually, you know, it's uh, our uh, viewer Aaron. This is not Aaron, but this is his dog. Uh, lady. Yes. And one of his identity theft prevention methods is taking any mail that uh, he wants to get rid of yeah. and giving it to his dog lady uh -huh. who rips it up. Very good. And then whatever's left over. Yeah, what does he do then? Throws in the fire. Very good. Excellent so, anti identity theft yeah. mechanism. Pretty hard to recover that. Okay. So, very good. Okay, well, you are the winner of the Windows Lockdown. Slightly peed on your XP and Vista guide against hacks, attacks, and other internet mayhem. And as I said, it's a little bit of a pee stain here. Yeah, you might want to throw like that this. straight into the fire too. And of course, the uh, the I think this is signed. It is a signed. It's signed, thing. but slightly mauled uh, version of the Absolute Beginner's Guide to Security Spam Spyware and Viruses. So congratulations to you, Aaron from Kewanee, Wisconsin. There you go. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Fantastic. Now we have other photos today too. More photos. Yes. Very good. Our uh, viewer Paul Leonard. Who apparently cycles on the ceiling and carries a lizard around on his shoulder. Right. Yeah, but he also has cats as well. Right. Good timing there, Biff. Um, yes, right. We have uh, <laughs> Radar cats. on the left yes. and Marsha on the right. Radar and Marsha. And uh, Paul actually had a question for us as well. Okay. So we'll go flip back to Paul for a second. And yes. Paul asks, yes. uh, how do I get this lizard off my shoulder? Now he actually asked, how do I transfer my files that are on my PBR onto another device like my computer? Uh -huh. And the answer, Paul, is you don't. Yeah, really. you can. Yeah, there's not there's not an easy way except for going out the digital hole at the back. Well, and you can so you can do one thing. So you can actually record it to analog, right? To, yes. To to a VCR to tape. Right. Or to you, if you can hook up your computer and go to analog and then convert it back in, yeah. you lose that generation, right? Or if you have TiVo, you have a piece of software called TiVo to go, and you can suck all of the data off of your TiVo across your network and pull it onto your PC or your Mac. Yeah. And uh, you can do that with, uh, I think, Roxio product uh, on the PC side and something yeah. called Toast on, uh, on the Mac side. Yeah. So this is it if is you possible. Have TiVo. Yeah, if, if, you, have TiVo. if you've got one of those high definition PBR boxes from your cable company, that's essentially you have to go out through the back door through the, uh, you kind of through the analog thing and into a VCR or into a capture, and it's really going to look not so good. So, right. no, you can't just take it straight out, right. unfortunately. And to, and to get a lizard off your shoulders, you use a hammer. Or have uh, one of these uh, cats chase it off. That's right. So there okay. you go. There you go. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for your pictures this week. Uh, if you have a picture of your cat or your rat, your elephant, your wife, your children, your technology, send it to us at... Help! I've got a lizard, rat, wife, or children on my shoulder at labrats.tv. Or feedback at labrats.tv. Which is a less boring option, but probably get to us faster. Less boring. <laughs> All right. And before we go, uh, I want to remind you that Labrats is now on butterscotch.com, a brand new uh, video network uh, for people that love technology but find it a little too techy. You can go to www.butterscotch.com and see us and a whole bunch of new shows that we've, we're producing um, over at Two Cows Corporation uh, with Andrew MacArthur, with Cheryl Poirier, with a whole bunch of other super fabulous people, uh, including all the techy feet folks from uh, G4 Tech TV as well. So. And Biff. And Biff as well. Biff's got his own new show. Well, he should. He should. Yes. He doesn't, he should. All right. Well, thank you so much for pushing play this week. We love you. We love to uh, hear from you. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Pee on the book. Pee on the book again. Are you ready?
Hello and welcome to another edition of La Rats, your technology show on the internet that teaches you all kinds of fun stuff about uh, the weird words and buzzwords and things like that. I just have to stop right here. <laughs> just keep it rolling.